Well, welcome back to our chapel chat. Uh, this is an online Zoom version of this. Um, and I have with me today to discuss our final episode of the Wild Goose series, uh, Megan Feeblecorn. Megan, please tell us a little, a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do here. Okay. Um, so again, like Father said, I am Megan. My husband, Chris, and I um, have been members of St. Pat's Parish for almost 13 years. Uh, we have three small children and um, at the parish, I've been working at the parish for a little over a year. I am Father Matthias's assistant, and I also coordinate infant baptisms and lead baptism preparation. Excellent. Well, very good. I'm very happy to have you for this last episode. So this episode number 14 is the, called The Spirit Remembers. Uh, so what do you remember about the episode? <laughs> what struck your heart? What, what is it that kind of inspired you? Or maybe just uh, something you want to share with the people. So something that really struck me as I was watching um, and Father Pavanko was talking, he really goes into uh, something that's a familiar sort of theme at our parish, which is that there's always more of God. There's always more of him to receive. He desires to continually pour himself out and pour his spirit into us. And um, I was thinking of an experience I had actually. I was driving one day um, and I pulled into our garage. I pulled home and I had been praying and I felt the Lord he he sort of showed me or or had me feel this um remember what it's like when you first start dating somebody and you're getting to know them and how exciting that is and how you are just you want to know every little thing about them and how fun it is and how uh just thrilling it is sort of the thrill of getting to know somebody and i thought there's we get to know god forever because we've never had enough of him and he there's always more of him to know um and so that is something that really struck me this idea of how thrilling it is that it's never over we get to know him we get to find out new things about him he gets to reveal himself to us in new ways forever and that really struck me um as as father pavanka was talking about how he doesn't ration himself ever yeah and it's just so fascinating, like when you get to know God, how exciting he is and how new and fresh he is. He, he, he never, ever gets boring. Um, but it's interesting to me as a priest seeing, um, and sometimes in my own heart, right, but also in the hearts of others, like sometimes we can get bored of God and we can forget him. Um, why do you think that it's so easy for us to forget God and what he's done for us? I think... A lot of it is just the regular day to day. Uh, we get busy. We um, neglect the relationship. Um, similar to any any relationship, really, if we don't if we don't put forth an effort, um, if we don't spend the time with him, uh, it can he can just sort of recede. And um, and so I think that it's it's easy in in the midst of the chaos. I mean, I'm a mother of three small children, so I totally get how difficult it can be to make that time. Um, that's something in the episode that really struck me too is the importance of prayer and spending time with Him. And I think especially in this time of of the pandemic, when we've been at home, we haven't been able to attend mass regularly. We haven't been able to do a lot. It's a time that we have been able to really be with him or that um i feel like he has given us this opportunity to really learn how to just be with him instead of always do um and and just making that time to sit with him um you know prayer is so important i love the catechism when it talks about prayer uh and the spirit in prayer as father pavanka mentions in this episode the importance of of the holy spirit in prayer only it's a gift from the Lord himself, just praying, praying, um, praying itself is a gift from him. The spirit prompts us to pray. And the catechism talks about prayer is God thirst so that we might thirst for him. And prayer is the meeting of God's thirst with ours. And I have always loved that. And the Holy Spirit is just like just pouring himself out and, and he is in us to prompt us to pray. So we just need to quiet ourselves enough to be able to receive that. Absolutely. And when we when we forget prayer, we forget him. And uh, it's one of the things that I keep coming over and over and over back to is that um, there's there's two sayings that we, we, we want to, I think it's very popular. It's like out of sight, out of mind. When God is not in sight, when he's not in vision, when, when he's not like, we're, we're not opening our hearts to him, he's going to be out of our mind. Uh, we're not going to think about him. When he, when we, and when we don't think about him, it's precisely there that we forget what he's done 
when we, we forget what he's done, that's when we become anxious, we become fearful, we become kind of um, kind of self-preoccupied, right? Um, and so uh, the, the, that saying, um, out of sight, out of mind, should never apply to us about God. We should have things in our life that remind us of who we are, of whose we are, and what we're made for, and we should have a space to allow the Holy Spirit to thirst in us, to, to, to have his way. And this is why I always say 90% of prayer is showing up. 90% of the prayer, he, he does the rest. I mean, like the 10% is of us actually being willing to go through all the different ways in which we resist him, right? But that 90% is showing up, uh, of, of prayer is showing up. The second thing I, I is a saying that not as many people know is that um, I heard this said to me um, multiple times, the only thing to fear in the Christian life is the lack of prayer. The only thing to fear is lack of prayer. When we get so busy and we have our priorities in such a way that we don't have time for prayer, whatever our vocation is, it's precisely then that we really need, I don't wanna say be afraid, but like that's what we really need to be afraid of. We're, we're disconnected from the source and we shouldn't be surprised that we fall away from him. We shouldn't be surprised that our lives get filled with all these other things and that we don't have that relationship, which is fulfilling. Um, and I, I'll never forget that, uh, just how important prayer is in scheduling time. Um, we do a lot of things to distract ourselves in prayer, don't we? From remembering yes. the deeds of the Lord, right? Um, and there's a lot of, I mean, we all, we're all busy, right? We all can be really, really busy, um, as busy as we want. But how much of that busyness is running away from that encounter with God, running away from that intimacy, right? Uh, that prayer, which sometimes can be challenging. Uh, and so I find uh, one of the things that's helpful for me is just to constantly be praising him for what he has done and what he is doing. Um, because throughout the day, if I just remember him and his, his presence to me and what he's doing, I, it's it's amazing what happens when I actually We'll, we'll talk with him about what's going on. Um, and I have this w strange habit of when a problem comes up or a fear comes up, me thinking myself out of it or trying to think my way out of a problem. Um, and I try to think my way out of a problem. I find out at the end, I still have a problem. <laughs> so sometimes like he's the one that has a solution. He's the one that just wants to draw near to me. So sometimes like, oh, I'll pause and be like, okay, Jesus, what are you doing right now? Holy Spirit, what are you doing right now? And I open my heart to a relationship and then he comes in and either reminds me of something or he speaks his word or I just have a sense of his a, a presence. And I realize, oh my goodness, I'm thinking about it wrong or this isn't really a problem. And, and how easily I forget to do that, right? So um, Holy Spirit, one of the greatest things you could do for me is remind me of, uh, of, of your presence, right? And isn't that what he talks about in this episode? Yes, reminding him, I, I, I struggle with the same thing. I'll think something through and have the solution ready. And it's like, and then I take it to the Lord in prayer. Um, I don't know, expecting him to uh, just agree <laughs> with me or something, as opposed to having, approaching him first sometimes. Um, and, and yeah, reminding, he reminds us um, of just the promises, how good our father is that, you know, he is the promise of the father, right? The spirit reminds us of, how faithful God is, um, how much he loves us, how much he is continually pouring out his mercy. Um, he's just, he's there to meet us, spending that time with him. It's not, it's not on us, if you will. Like you said, it's, it's showing up and it's, it's just letting him love us, letting him speak to us, letting him go to the areas where he knows we need, uh, healing work, um, just mercy, all of it, uh, our part is is to be there and 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 he does the rest um and so viewing it that way you know there's no amount of work i can do that's going to make him love me more i just need to put myself in front of him and and let him and and let him love me more than i could ever imagine because he's you know he's just doing it constantly and pouring himself out it's who he is amen one of my favorite images of prayer uh or understandings of prayer is allowing god to love you like when you pray, you're just simply allowing God to love you. You're you're sitting in his presence. He's gazing upon you or he's he's having surgery on you. He's providing for whatever, whatever he's doing. It's him loving you. Um, and I think so many times we get this this sense. I got to do something in prayer. I got to I got to like show God that I'm good enough. I got to try to get his attention. I got to try to do all this stuff. And he's like, well, no, we already have his attention. 
He's already decided to love us for eternity. He's definitively decided to choose to forgive us. And we, he just keeps doing that. All we need to do is show up. Um, and, uh, and, it, and that make, that takes the pressure off of prayer um, and, uh, um, and pressure off of us in prayer. And the more we come to know who he is by reading, uh, spiritual reading, the scriptures, you know, study, you know, catechesis, like the more we know, know who he is, the clearer the lies are uh, that prevent us from praying. Like, like some of the lies that come up that I, I think are just silly, but that's because my mind has been purified by him in prayer and through my study. Um, but I also know that that's a, that's a decision that we all have to make. I mean, um, we never stop growing in our relationship with our family members. We never stop growing our relationship with people that we love. Um, and so it takes time. And, uh, and the time, as Pope Benedict says, time in prayer is never time wasted. But I would say if we do not spend time in prayer, we are wasting our lives because we're, we're wasting so much energy. We're wasting so much anxiety and fear and frustration and unforgiveness and, and hardship. All that stuff, all that energy is wasted because God wants to come into that and he wants to bring restoration and, and hope. Um, and so I would say very boldly, if you're not praying, you're wasting your time, period. Like there's no way of, I've never said that before. Um, but I think it's true. And the spirit wants to fill us with himself if only we give him an opportunity. Yes. And I think it's great too. I know it's something that he has really shown me and has grown in me um, is that it will work with our vocation too. So for me, quality prayer, you know, um, as someone, as a, a mother of small children, um, I don't have hours to be able to spend in prayer. And, and I used to really sort of, I mean, I've, I've had that longing before and, and, uh, but he's blessed. It's like the intentionality and the desire to show up. He has blessed the, uh, you know, if it's 10, 15 minutes in the morning, starting my day, just the intentionality, the, the being with him, um, he has blessed that so much. Uh, and it looks different depending on, you know, state and life. And, um, that's something that was really important for me to keep in mind as I have grown in my prayer life. Um, but, but still doing it, not neglecting it. That's, that's been really, really key, um, is just still doing it and having that as the foundation for everything else. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Megan, so much. Isn't she a great assistant? <laughs> but thank you so much for being here. Um, and let us, let us close with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for, for the gift of your love. We just ask you by the power of your spirit that you always remind us of who we are, that you, that you lift our hearts up in prayer, that you help us uh, so that we might uh, constantly in, encounter you. We ask that you just show us, Lord, um, how you want us to prioritize our lives. Help us not to waste this precious time to be able to get to know you uh, and to spend uh, time with you here so that we will be ready to spend time with you for eternity and, to, and get to know you and to, to constantly receive your incredible uh, and your just amazing love. We thank you, Lord, for all the people who have persevered in watching this um, Holy Spirit uh, Wild Goose series with Father Pravanka and um, those who are watching these chats as well. We ask, Lord, in a special way that you bless us with a more rich or a richer experience of your Holy Spirit, that we may truly be about the Spirit's work to become saints and to bring your love to those who do not yet know your saving love. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. God bless. Thanks, Father.